Hi, welcome to Inside the Yachting. We have Antonia 2 up for review today. She's the only 105 foot azimuth that is currently available uh, in the US. Very well maintained boat, very attentive captain who is uh, passionate about keeping the boat in 100% uh, working condition and even better uh, if you like than one that would be fresh out of the out of the factory now if you're watching this on youtube then i'll encourage you to click on the link down below the uh, video window and head over to insideyachting.com it's where we have all the uh, fringe information the guides and, and all the good stuff uh, if you're already on inside the yachting then over on the right hand side you'll see the yacht pack button uh, we have these ready to go for Antonia 2 and for every boat that's currently available on the market. So just click on that button, leave your name and the best email address for you and the name of the boat that you're interested in and we'll get that off to you right away. And that has in it all the photographs, uh, detailed descriptions, specifications and some a pricing analysis for, for that boat and any other information that we uh, might have. So let's take a look at Antonia 2. So she was launched in 2007, but you can see already um, they have started to move towards those larger sort of hull side windows. So this actually looks like a much more modern model from Azimut, uh, even though it's a, a 2007. So 105 foot long, it's 22, um, almost 23 foot in beam, uh, fairly good shallow draft. Uh, just over six and a half feet. Great cruising and maximum speeds out of the uh, engines that they have on board the MTUs. 25 knot max and cruises at around 22 knots. Uh, launched in 2007, as I mentioned, and she's currently asking $5,800. And it's really a great um, example of a, a flybridge boat in the size range. Very, very beautiful interior. So let's take a look at some of the photographs. So here's the, the main salon, um, open plan sort of dining room. The, the wood package here is fairly standard from uh, boats, especially Italian boats of this age. Um, they like this sort of lighter wood with a lot of playing with the different grains of the veneers on, on the cabinetry there. What I do like about the interior of this is all the soft goods have uh, all been updated so they bring in sort of a bit of color and a bit of lightness um, to what sometimes can be quite a um, sort of dull area in, in some of the older models of this boat. They sort of overused the, the words and it all ended up looking a little bit washed out. But this is actually a really nice interior, very bright, lots of uh, natural light coming in through the windows and through those huge glass sliding doors out the back there. The um, galleon in here isn't too big. It's nice that the azimuths don't do what some of the other manufacturers do and, and just have this oversized, very impressive galley. But essentially, it, it is a bit of a wasted area as far as guest uses are concerned. Uh, this galley here, it's very practical, uh, does what it says on the tin, um, and they can quite happily serve the um, total capacity of the boat with this size galley so it leaves other spaces for for guest uses and and as you'll see a little bit further on here the the huge master cabin that they have on board so there's a few other photographs of some of the service areas of the boat have the galley again here at the top on the left hand side and then the other two photographs uh, bottom on left and top on the right this is of the crew mess area now the crew area is directly off of the galley, so it's nice that the crew don't have to walk through guest areas in order to get sort of to and from the crew mess. It also means that the crew area uh, doesn't need to have a separate galley or cooking facilities down there because it's right off of the um, off of the the main galley here. So uh, the crew can just go directly on down those stairs and and sort of serve the food that way. The other photograph, of course, is the bridge. Uh, this is a raised pilot house style boat. So they have this short sort of in-between deck here like we've uh, seen with, with plenty of other models available here in the US and, and in Europe. Um, a, a fairly nondescript 
helm station here. They have all the Furuno equipment, everything that you'd expect to see on a boat of this size. But again, just as the galley, it's not oversized. It doesn't have anything in there that, that really isn't essential. And, and the area as a whole is, is pretty well sized for the, for the overall length of the boat. So no wasted area here. Now through into the master cabin, um, the boat has had quite a few upgrades from the initial build and since the, the boat has been delivered as well. So nice entertainment package here, a nice flat screen TVs everywhere. There was a pop up flat screen TV in the main salon there as well, if you didn't uh, notice that the first time around. But this is really an, a nice um, sort of separate area to the boat. It really feels like it's a, a different um, a separate separated area from that sort of main salon and, and from any of the other guest cabins. Uh, so on deck you have great side windows, great view of the horizon. Um, the other nice thing about this uh, room is that they actually put the the uh, bathroom and the, the master cabin head down a level. So where sometimes you would see a uh, crew being all the way up forwards and then if it was an on deck master cabin that sort of footprint on that main deck level would have to be split between cabin and bathroom well here they've actually moved that bathroom sort of down a level so on that bottom photograph that you can see on the left hand side there it's a few steps going down well that's to the um to the bathroom for the master cabin uh, we can see that down in the lower photograph on the right hand side has a nice big bathtub there has a, a huge walk-in shower and then sort of toilets and some dressing areas off to either side of that so you can see that here there's the step the top photograph on the left that's the steps coming down from the cabin um, and then you see this there's sort of the the head the separate head with the door there through on to the um, on the left hand side shower in the center and then just behind where this photograph would have been taken from was that tub that we saw earlier on now the boat is a four stateroom layout so it has two vip cabins it has one twin and then the the master cabin so these two vip cabins that's where we see the large hull side window in that original profile photograph so it really has this enormous oversized window for the actual size of the cabin and it just makes that that room feel much larger much more opulent and uh, much more suited to a, a sort of VIP usage. So this one of the cabins that we can see down on the left hand side there and that's that enormous window that's there. Uh, the bed isn't quite a queen size bed. It's a, a double bed. It's really only can't be classed as a queen because of the rounded edges at the, at the end. But essentially it's a, a, a queen size bed. And a nice bathroom to that as well, separate shower, nice vanity top that you can see in the top on the right hand side there. And in the photograph below that, that is the uh, one twin that, that is on board. Moving into some more of the crew areas. These are the uh, crew cabins here, the three crew cabins, the captain's cabin and then uh, sort of two others for the crew. And outside is the um, sort of main deck exterior dining. Now, the exterior areas on board the boat are really what, what sell the boat. It has a huge uh, flybridge or, or sun deck that is much larger in volume than you expect to see on any other boat in this size range. Um, and again, here on the aft deck, it's really an oversized um, exterior area and that is true for a lot of European built boats you tend to find that the exterior areas are slightly bigger than those on American built boats and, and essentially that has a lot to do with the fact that predominantly boats over here are used sort of on the east coast of the states and, and over to the Bahamas and it's just too hot to spend and too humid to spend for a long period of times outside so you tend to find that the interior is a little larger and a little more sort of socially orientated than than the um, equivalent European boats. Um, it also goes to explain why the 
air conditioning packages are upgraded for boats that are coming over here as well just simply because it's so it's so humid in in those popular areas popular boating areas so moving up on to the sun deck now the solid bimini top here actually has two retractable sections now a lot of the times we see one retractable section but here it's it's really nice to have both because then essentially you can when the weather's right you can open that entire bimini top up and have it all open to the sun so we can see that at the top photograph on the right hand side the the fore and aft retractable sections up here we have multiple sun loungers various sun pads a nice big jacuzzi there's a bar up here various seating areas i mean it really you do get a feel for the vastness of, of this deck and, it, and it's really something that you don't see on um, many boats in this size range at all um, the boat's set up well for water sports equipment we have lots of dive gear on board it has the uh, trolleys there for the jet ski and the tender that's on board you can see the tender just um, in the water on that top photograph on the right hand side there and then of course that's all accessed by this nice big swim platform that, that folds down um, engineering equipment that's on board that's listed in the write-up um, I encourage you to get the yacht pack for this and then you can flick through all of this information almost identical information that we see here um, and then we do throw in some other things as well including uh, pricing analysis but you'll be able to read through all of this individual specific sort of bits in that uh, in that yacht pack uh, the boat has just had some um, scheduled maintenance done on the main engines which is great as I said at the beginning of the review the captain and the owner are very proactive with the maintenance and, and upgrades and things on board so this is essentially one of the best um, kept azimuts on on the market and not only that but also the only 105 that's currently available so here we can see the uh, the deck layout or the GA um, looking at that lower photograph you can see the two VIP cabins port and starboard there that's where the uh, huge side hull windows were and then moving up to the to the next um, deck you can see at the forward end is that VIP cabin and then if you look sort of on the bow there down to that lower photograph again there you'll see that's the level of that master bathroom so you have to sort of look at both of those sketches to get an idea of how that master cabin is laid out so now in, into the um, into the write-up the one thing I'll point out here is the boat isn't duty paid um, so that means that it's not for sale to US residents whilst in US waters so as long as the boat is outside of US waters it can be shown to US clients just not while it's here in the in the US and that would be the same for doing any kind of closing as well it would go outside of uh, US waters so where it's highlighted there not for sale to US residents well that is true but only when it's in US waters so going over a few of the specs that we touched on earlier on, the couple of things that we didn't see, a four stateroom layout, five heads. It does have a separate a day head on that main deck level. As the MTU engines, they were uh, just serviced. They had their 2000 hour service done um, not too long ago. So everything's up to par there. Also had the 2000 hour service done on the generators. So it's nice having those two hours fairly similar you you um, are told by that that the boat isn't just sat sort of at the dock running on its own generators and of course that's when you start to create issues with sooting and smoking and, and uh, it also goes to damage the paintwork of course if that exhaust is just tumbling on the side of the hull all the time so they do plug into electricity the boat has um, great uh, shore power converters on board so it essentially can go anywhere and still plug into shore power electricity which is a nice feature to have on um, the fuel capacity and water capacity all fairly standard um, does have water uh, makers on board so uh, that's nice to replenish that fresh water tanks without having to go back to the dock uh, crew quarters that we saw the three separate crew quarters earlier on um, and 
and a nice area there that was off of the off of the galley um, that we saw, which means that the crew, as I mentioned, don't have to walk through the guest areas to get to and from their uh, their own little area. Now, as I mentioned, I won't pull everything off this right up. Get that yacht pack, and you can go through it at your own time. I will go through some of the upgrades that are here. Now, these upgrades are upgrades from the build and also things that have been done since. Uh, the boat was repainted in 2010. Also had the uh, anti-foul redone at that time as well. But it's nice to know that it has that all grip paint, which means that it will be at least another um, three, maybe even four years before the boat would need to start getting any kind of touch up work done again. Underwater exhaust, that was an upgrade that was done to reduce the noise of the boat underway. It also makes the burning a little bit cleaner as well. Track stabilizers on board. It also has the upgraded air conditioning uh, systems, which are great for the humidity of being used over here in the west uh, east coast. The uh, AC shore power converters, that's something that isn't standard on uh, most of the azimuth build. As I mentioned earlier, the 2000 hour service was just done on the main engines and the generators. And it has a few other things like CCTV, the uh, Panasonic telephone system that's on board. Uh, looking through some of the rest of the write up, it details the fact that it, you know, all the work has been done by, by the captain and proactive owners. So it's a very good condition. And then it goes into list some of the equipment that's in the galley, the dining room, uh, lots of the uh, sort of stainless steel equipment that we saw in the galley, some upgraded industrial type equipment like the ovens and the burners and the exhaust fans and things. The cabins has all of the uh, flat screen TVs. It has satellite TV with separate receivers for each cabin. So each room will have its own control of what they see on the on the TV. Uh, navigation equipment, the Fruno equipment that's up in the chart house. It also has repeater equipment for the uh, Flybridge Helm station as well. And you can see that at the bottom there on the left hand side. So everything that you would expect to see the uh, GPS's, radars, um, the depth sounders, autopilots, everything that you would expect to see on a on a boat of this size. So here the uh, the equipment in the garage, it has the hydraulic launching cradles for the tender and the jet skis that we saw in there. Uh, there's some workout equipment in there as well. It also has a separate electrical room for those shore power converters, um, which is actually a, a great point to have when you when you install shore power converters, they generally get very, very hot when they're being uh, worked under high load. So if you can imagine you're uh, just pulled into a, a dock and you're cooking dinner and the crew are washing down and all the lights are on, the girls are getting showers and then blow drying the hair. So that shore power converter has been really, really worked with all of the power that's needed to, to um, run all those systems that are being used. So that means that everything gets very, very hot in, in that shore power converter. Now, if you don't have a separate room for that and have its own ventilation and exhaust, then quite often at those high usage times, the shore powers will actually cut out and, and, and it will go dead ship. So having that separate shore power room or electrical room means that they can pay much closer attention to uh, getting that ventilation and the cooling right so that you can use everything on board and not have to worry about tripping breakers and things so um, the generator uh, electrical switch boxes and things will all be in there as well and that's good again everything can keep cool and, and all running as it should do so in the engine room there's the mtu uh, 16 valve uh, v2000 so very a uh, common engine, easy to get parts and, and labor worked on, on all those engines. Uh, has the storage tank, the cola generators, um, the track stabilizer that we saw, the water makers. So all the equipment, again, same as in, in the uh, wheelhouse that, that you would expect to see here. So that's it for, for um, this boat. 
As I mentioned, if you're watching us on YouTube, get over to the um, website inside the yachting.com and you can click around, get all the information that you'll need. We have the daily yacht tours that we run and get you on board all, all the boats like, like this and, and other boats that are available. So it's a great time to answer, ask any uh, questions that you may have. We have the yacht packs, which have all of the information in them. We have a yacht pack for every boat that's currently on the market um, and some other things. So click around there, click around the site, um, request some of those pricing guides that actually lets you know what boats are selling for in today's market. So it'll give you an idea of the percentage difference between the asking price and the actual sale price, which is one of the first things that you want to know when you're getting into this industry. So thanks for watching. Um, we have the other two boats up for review this week. So click on the links there just down below, um, below this window and uh, I'll see you over there.